Hello everyone and welcome to Harvest World for another episode of Ravensburg. So I am over at the new dairy facility early this morning. Um, just getting the paperwork squared away because I have not yet gotten the cattle moved. Nope, I haven't. I sure haven't. <laughs> and uh, well, got to get that done. That's got to be done this morning. Now, I do have crops ready to harvest. Both the sunflowers and the canola are ready to come in. You can see we are struggling for cash, and yes, this is kind of my personal vehicle. This or the Massey. <laughs> Pick one. It doesn't matter. Um, I've had to rent some equipment or, you know, lease some equipment to, uh, to pay for this little move. But it needs to be done. It's got to be done. We're starting to run out of space in our current cattle barn, and I didn't build that big one for nothing. The first thing I want to do, however is bring in a little bit of cash and I've had these tanks sitting here forever I'm not using them I don't see that I will be using them so bye bye <laughs> and that's gonna bring in about 18,000 so that will help us out significantly significantly yes Harv English English Now, I don't know where this is going to end up putting us on the cattle feed situation, but I do know that I'm going to need some feed, or need to have some feed over there ready to go, um, because obviously I don't want them to starve over there. They're going to take a little bit of a health hit in the move. They always do. I'm going to try to get them fed up as quick as I can. I'm going to bring, yeah, that'll do for now. But I'm only going to move the newborns. Any of the current milkers are going to stay right where they're at. The newborns only are coming over to the new barn. That'll give them plenty of time, space, energy, <laughs> whatever to do whatever they need to do. And where is my feed trough around here anyway? Is it on the other side? Probably. Because that's, that's the way things go for Harv. Woo! In a little bit of a hurry there, Harv. Easy, brother. Easy. I bet it's along here. Yep. I just saw a tip in somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. I saw it flash at me. There we go, right through here. I don't think it's going to let me tip right now. Well, it did let me toss just a smidge in there, which is highly unusual. I'm going to leave that tractor parked right here. I'm going to go grab a truck. Well, you can see it kind of filling up right there. Cool. I'm going to go grab my truck and start moving cattle. I did not go small on this truck either. I'm going to tell you right here and now. I did not go small. And no, no, no. I'm not close enough. I need to back up a little bit more. There we go. That'll do me. Alright, girls. It's moving day. It's moving day. So we can tell that these are young. Um, their age is right here. I mean, gosh, we've had four new births just this morning. Or yesterday, late yesterday even. But they're only 41 kilograms, so they're not weighing in very much. And so anything that's under, say, 200 is going to get a nice little move over. This should hold a significant amount. Yep, there we go. So that should be about 56 cows we've got in there. Look at them all packed in nice and neat. Now you might have noticed we do have a few males and that's that's okay for now. We're going to we're going to feed them up, grow them up and when they get up to a good weight, we'll sell them off. And we'll just leave it at that. Oh, man, we're struggling to pull these cattle. <laughs> struggling big time. You're not going far, girls. And maybe the occasional boy. Not going far. We're just going up the hill here. Hang tough. So I figure we've got about 150 to move over. 
And then as more newborns come, well, we'll see, because it was not a cheap proposition to lease up this equipment, I have to tell you. I wonder. I just want to check something very quickly. Nope. Well, I know where the, the loading point is. Um, I was just hoping there might be an easier one. <laughs> because this one's awfully tight. And trying to back into this little slot is going to be even more of a challenge. This is some tight, 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 tight action through here. Just need to get close enough. Just close enough. Easy, brother. Easy, brother. Almost. Nope. Come on, Harv, you can do this. There we go. That will do us. That'll do us. Okay, there we go. Cattle in the cattle barn. Dairy barn. Whatever you want to call it. I think they're in shock. They're just kind of standing there. Not doing very much. Alright, last dozen of the newborns moving over. And that's going to leave us with... Let's see here. We've got 113 left mature cattle over there which is you know that's exactly right that's what we started with 113 i bought 70 newborns from uh, harry huber before he left the building <laughs> and um so we've got 177 over here 177 newborn cattle that need to be fed desperately i haven't decided what i'm going to do about the straw situation yet at least they've got grass so that's good very very good they did take a little bit of a health hit. They're down to 76%. That's not bad, all things considered, compared to our 95%. So about a 20% health hit. I'm not going to complain about that. Right now, I need to focus on getting them fed up. Need to get them some hay. I need to get them some alfalfa or uh, clover silage. It's going to be alfalfa silage for now. And I need to, well, do I give these guys the straw or the other guys the straw? Hmm. I think the newborns get the straw. So if you provide cows with straw, um, they produce manure. If you don't provide them with straw, they produce slurry. But not giving them straw also means they're not quite as healthy not quite as productive so i think the larger herd should get the straw i don't really know that i have enough to um do both i'll, I'll tell you I'm, I'm not really sure about that so i think i'm going to straw these guys up and i will let my milkers at this well no wait no keep thinking harv don't make a snap decision no the milkers are going to get the straw i want their health to stay as high as possible as these guys start producing milk by that time i should be able to produce enough straw if i decide it's even necessary this is interesting lots of places to tip feed in um, if I decide it's necessary, I should produce enough straw to be able to get them, you know, these guys producing manure also and increase their health so that their milk production is higher. I mean, we're obviously very dependent on the milk these guys are going to produce. Alright, so I want you guys to see this. I mean, I'm loading milk right now, but I can't get the delivery guy anyway. When I try it, says the milk contractor driver has spilled his coffee and decided to take the day off. 
they should be available tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's great. I think I might spill my coffee and take the day off. Good God, man. People will skip work for any lame reason they can think of. Oh, I spilled my coffee, so I probably better not come into work today. I think I'll just uh, stay home and cry and make more coffee. Whatever. <laughs> oh, man. Apparently, dealing with these cattle today is going to be an all-day affair. <laughs> Clearly an all-day affair. I'm just pulling in to uh, sell off the last of the milk. Man, I've been hauling and hauling and hauling today. I feel like all I've done is drive. I haven't accomplished much. Well, that's not fair. I mean, I did get cattle moved. I did get the milk hauled, finally. And I did get money into the farm. How much did we end up with milk-wise? Let's find out. Sixty-seven thousand nine hundred and seventy euros. Almost said dollars. I caught myself. Euros. Sixty-seven nine seventy. So that's another. Um, let's see, sixty-seven hundred and half again. Would be three thousand three hundred and fifty. Seven, ten, ten thousand euros for me. Woohoo! Harv's having some good days now. <laughs> yes, he is. Now, one thing that I have never done, and it, it's it's actually a little bit surprising to me. One thing I've never done on the world tour is I've never specifically looked at the farm equipment that's manufactured in a particular country, which is a little bit surprising. That's not like me. I usually try to touch on a little bit of everything about a country, but I've never specifically said, hey, this stuff is manufactured in this particular country. Well, it so happens that I'm going to be doing that today. And it also so happens that Germany has quite the extensive, extensive, very extensive farm equipment manufacturing um, system, community, lengthy whatever yeah you know, you know what I'm talking about there's a lot of farm equipment manufactured in Germany I'm not gonna get it all I'm sure I'm not going to get it all but I'm gonna try to uh, hit most of what is available in this thing that we know and love called farming simulator it's looking like that's gonna be tomorrow though because it looks like harvest is going to take place tomorrow and not today which I really wanted to. I will get set up. I did want to show you something, though. Um, it cost me $2,000 to get this all set up, or 2,000 euros. See, I did it again. But I needed a place to start repairing stuff because hauling it to the shop and back all the bloody time was getting a little bit old. And I also want to tell you about a conversation I had with Frau Baumann when I showed her the new dairy facility. It was a little bit surprising, actually. A little bit surprising. But we'll get to that tomorrow. We're on the back side of fall, day four, and it is 8.30, 8.41 in the morning, and I'm sitting down here next to field 43. Why? Because I had to show you this I had to show you this. I've been saving up my money. Honestly, legitimately, I'm about broke now. But field 43, right here, is mine all mine. It doesn't belong to Herr Huber. It doesn't belong to Frau Baumann. It belongs to little old Harv. Unfortunately, I don't have the money to get any equipment to come over here and harvest this. I'm not going to be so inconsiderate as to try to use Frau Baumann's. Um, I mean, it's a little bit of spelt. It's only one hectare, so it's not massive or anything. But I'm kind of feeling like I got this for about, what was it, 77,000, something like that, euros? Not too shabby. And you see this wide open space right here? 
It's not mine yet, but I'm kind of feeling like Harv could build a barn, build a yard, build a farm right about here. You know what I'm going to do on this farm? Not cows. That's what I'm going to do. I am not doing cattle of any kind. <laughs> I haven't really decided what I'm doing, but sure as heck isn't going to be cows. Well, so far this morning, 45,000 euros have come into the farm. Why? Because Harv rocks. <laughs> okay, maybe not all that. But um, that first trailer load of milk came down here to the supermarket. Bob's your uncle, 35,000 euros and another 30,000. So that's 65,000, 66,000, really. And then um, my helper finished up that contract fertilizing that field we're almost out of manure if you can believe that um, so that's another 10,000 so what did I just say 65 and 30 is uh, 66 or 35 and 30 and some change which really adds up to 66,000 plus another 10 76,000 euros now we're making money Frau Bauman's making real money. I'm making good money. And that reminds me, I needed to tell you about Frau Bauman. Now, I got that dairy facility in, obviously. I mean, you saw that. Ooh, squirrely trailer. And um, brought her over. I said, hey, you know, you've got to see this. And she looked at it at first, and she had that look on her face like, why do I have this? <laughs> what what is this all about I, I just wanted to restore my grandparents farm and she turned and looked at me and said where are the chickens and yes I, I know I have promised chickens and I know I was heading well I, I don't I, is promise the right word I'm not convinced promise is necessarily the right word but, um, yes, she wants a full-scale dairy. And I, I said, well, I really felt like getting one one animal squared away, you know, solidly um, taken care of was the right decision before we move on to something else. And I think that sort of appeased her. And uh, yes, you might notice there are two milk trailers now. That first bit of income, I have to remember, 76000 I need 15% of that in my account. But yes, I, I stopped at the, the shop on my way back and picked up a second milk trailer. So I'll be able to haul 50,000 liters at a time now instead of just 25,000. Woo and who? <laughs> that will make my life so much easier. Um, anyway... So, you know, I said, well, well, look, I mean, you know, you've got almost 300 cows. This is going to increase the cattle capacity to 850. You know, those 300 cows are going to turn into 600 cows, are going to turn into 1,200 cows. I mean, it's going to start growing exponentially here. And she kind of smiled and said, you know, I never imagined anything like this. I just imagined getting my grandparents farm back in back in order and I said well you know um, maybe I was thinking big because I was working for Herr Huber and he was thinking so big maybe that I just got that in my head I don't know for sure well it waited long enough 2 p.m. and the crop moisture just finally died down or uh, I guess evaporated enough that I could get back in this field. I did do some of it last night. Um, I knew that, you know, so sunflowers really need to get taken care of as soon as possible because quite frankly, the, uh, the price is about at its peak and is falling. If we look at our seasons menu, we can see here, sunflowers kind of peaked right here. Um, earlier in the fall and now they're starting to drop and they're really going to drop off during the winter time so i want to get those in and sold a s a p 
very important. I'm not as worried about getting the canola in because as long as I get it in before winter, we're okay. Um, I'm not as worried about that though because the peak price on canola, which we will look at here in just a second, the peak price on our canola is going to rise for the next several days. And we're looking at beginning of winter when that's going to be a good sell-off. I planted these crops when I didn't realize the kind of money we were going to be making off of our milk. They're cash crops, but hey, it is what it is what it is. <laughs> so anyway, I promised you um, some information about German farm equipment. And here it comes. The first... The first we're going to do these in alphabetical order, with one exception. The first is Amazon. I was a little surprised when I found out this was a German company because, you know, the name sounds a little bit South American. But it was founded in 1883 by Heinrich Dreyer. And they are headquartered in Hasbergen, Germany. They produce fertilizer spreaders, sprayers, seed drills, and tillage machines. I'm sure we've all used at least one piece of equipment from them at this point. Next on the list is Bergman, founded by Ludwig Bergman in 1896 in Goldenstedt, Germany, where they still reside. These guys do uh, tipper trailers, forge wagons, and manure spreaders. Next is one that everybody knows and loves, Klaas. These guys build amazing tractors, let me tell you. I've been very impressed, but man, get out your checkbook. Kloss was uh, originally started in 1887, but wasn't really founded until 1913. And they are headquartered in Harswinkel, Germany. They produce all kinds of stuff. I mean, tractors, balers, mowers, rakes, tedders, wheel loaders, telehandlers. You want it, Kloss probably makes it. The next one's a little bit unusual in that uh, it was founded not that long ago, technically speaking, Deutz Farr. Yes, they were established in 1968 uh, when Deutz purchased the Farr machine factory. And Farr was originally established in 1870 by Johann Farr, building tractors um, and other types of farm implements. They are headquartered in Lauingen, Germany. Flegel is another name we're familiar with and it's a fairly young company that specializes in trailers. Of course, we should know that. We've used them plenty of times. It was founded in 1970 by Josef Flegel and it's currently headquartered in Mühldorf, Germany. Now, if you like doing potatoes, you're going to recognize this next one. Grimma, founded in 1861 by Franz Grimma. They are headquartered in Dama, Germany. Franz decided to start developing potato harvest products about 1936. And if you want to do any kind of a root crop, Grimma is probably going to have the piece of equipment you're looking for. Now, Holmer also does harvesting for potatoes, root crops, things like that particularly sugar beets. It was founded by Alphonse Homer in 1969, where he did develop the first self-propelled six-row sugar beet harvester. They are located in Eggmühl, Germany. Now, one of my personal favorites is Horsch. Horsch was developed by Michael Horsch, who started tinkering around with farm equipment in about 1981. This is a very young company, and he fa officially founded the Horsch company in 1984. It originated on his family farm, if you can believe that of all places, in Schwandorf, Germany. Horsch makes all types of equipment from planters and seeders to fertilizer spreaders, and I'll bet you've used one at one point or another. Now, Krempe has a very storied history dating all the way back to 1918 when the first company was founded by August Krempe. They didn't start specializing in trailers, however, which is what they're known for now, until 1981, and they were building trailers out of used truck parts. Actually, they were junk truck parts. They were taking them from the junkyard, turning them into tipper trailers, and selling them to farmers. But I think we've all seen Krampa trailers at this point. And right along with Krampa, well, we have Krona, 
We've all used Krona equipment at this point, I'm sure, or at least seen it when it comes to doing grass work, mowers and the like. Well, Krona was founded in 1906 by Bernard and Anna Krona as a blacksmith shop. It had very, very humble beginnings, very humble beginnings indeed, and uh, is currently headquartered in Spella, Germany. They focus on forage wagons, mowers, tedders, rakes, that kind of thing, balers. So if you're looking to do grass work, Krona should be on your list. Now, Lemkin has a smaller footprint in the farm sim community. We don't see quite as much from them. Mostly plows, if I'm completely honest, but Lemkin was founded by Wilhelmus Lemkin in 1780. It's one of the oldest companies when it comes to farm equipment, and they are headquartered in Alpen, Germany. We've all seen the MAN trucks, or M-A-N trucks, in-game, and um, that originally stood for Maschinenfabrik Augsburg Nürnberg. Say that three times fast. Anyway, um, it is headquartered in Munich, Germany, and considers itself one of the leading international providers of commercial vehicles. So, that was interesting to find out. I didn't realize that MAN trucks were made in Germany. Now, Strautmann has a very interesting history. Um, it was founded by Bernard Johannes Strautmann, and he originally trained as a blacksmith, and the company that he worked for, or trained with, was the Carl Hagedorn Agricultural Machinery Factory, but he took that over in 1930. At the time, they were just making like hand rakes, potato crushers, stuff like that, and then they started manu to manufacture manure spreaders and just grew from there. Um, they're located in Winkelsetten, Germany, Winkelsetten, and we know them for trailers and, like you see here, cattle feed mixers. There's one more on my list, one more German company. I'll bet you know what it is. I'll bet you can guess. I'll bet you have a great idea. It's the one that's nearest and dearest to my heart. And I've always kind of known that these guys were from Germany. Now the Fent family name as craftsmen goes back in Germany over 350 years when they were making clocks and violins. So they started as a manufacturing family a long, long, long time ago. But it wasn't until the 1900s that they really started to transition into agricultural work. Although they always had a side farm that they worked on. Um... They didn't start building equipment until the 1900s. In fact, the first machine that they built was a motorized grass mower in 1928. They developed their very first tractor in 1930. It was called the Diesel Ross. It had a whopping six horsepower, <laughs> if you can believe that, to the big 500 plus horsepower, horsepower tractors that we see today. I'm going to admit it, I'm biased. I do love fat tractors. What can I say? It's what I learned to love when I learned to play farming sim. And I absolutely think they're fantastic. And of course, they do a lot more than just tractors. They are producing all sorts of combines, balers, and forage harvesters. Well, I got a goodly amount of sunflowers off of that field, I have to say. Not bad, not bad at all. How many was it? I had 33,000, almost, well, just over 33,000 liters, 33 and a half. Sunflowers are on the rise, too, so I'm going to keep an eye on that price because since they're climbing so much, I don't want to sell them off too early. It's dark. It's the fourth day of fall, and I think that's going to do it for this episode of Ravensburg. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons down below. As always, I very much appreciate you coming along for the ride. And until next time, take care.